This is Chris Allen of MMA Fight Bible. And John McElroy of Martial Arts Chat Podcast with your weekly MMA Power Hour News update. In the MMA news this week, Alexander the Mollard Gustafsson is set to take on Anthony Lionheart Smith at UFC Stockholm in June of this year. In an honest and frank interview with Theriot Hawani this week, the Mollard stated that if he comes up short in his hometown, then it may be time to call it a day. He's a guy with a good team behind him, he said, and this is going to be a real challenge, and that's why I'm doing this, to challenge myself. When I beat him, I'm going to move in the rankings. If I don't beat him, and if he beats me, then maybe I don't have any more, so I'll take it from there. It is no secret that Gustafsson and Smith share a common thread. The two light heavyweight contenders are the two most recent victims of John Jones and his newfound reign of dominance. Jones routed Gustafsson with a one-sided assault in his comeback fight at UFC 232, and then repeated the favour by effortlessly defending his light heavyweight strap earlier this month. A lopsided victory there over Anthony Smith at 235. Gustafsson will still have plenty of good memories to draw on for his return to the Ericsson Globe. The Muller has headlined two other UFC events in the past there, uh, and he won both those contests in resounding fashion. Uh, class Thiago Silva uh, on route to a decision back in 2012, and then of course that fabulous knockout of Glover to Shearer um, in May of 2017. He hopes history will repeat itself, I'm sure, once more come June the 1st. BJ Penn is stepping back into the octagon at UFC 237. Yep. For whatever reason, man, the UFC and Penn seem to think this is a good idea. If you talk to anyone in the MMA community uh, with the greatest of respect, you're flogging a dead horse here. You probably should have called that day several years ago. Um, Penn will take on fellow veteran in this one, Clay Guida uh, in Rio de Janeiro. Guida, of course, 34 and 18, fought for the last time in uh, June in 2018. He tapped uh, out. Uh, tapping to a guillotine choke against Charles Oliveira. The captain had one back-to-back bouts prior to that defeat, knocking out Joe Lozon in just over a minute and defeating Eric Koch via decision. UFC 237 is currently slated to feature Rose Namunis and Jessica Andrada as a headliner for that card. Donald Cowboy Cerrone says Nate Diaz is open to a rematch with him at middleweight. Okamoto reports that Cerrone and Diaz had a conversation at 2.35. Cerrone asked Nate when he was fed again. Diaz responded, it's not me, UFC doing it, implying that their promoter is the reason he had been inactive for so long. Cerrone, meanwhile, is known for being extraordinarily active, as we know, a company man and a team player. And after a stint at welterweight, he most recently dropped back down to lightweight to demolish Alex. Hernandez in his veteran performance. Why 185 though? Diaz is known to be a lightweight, supposedly getting up to near 200 pounds when he isn't trading. His brother Nick went from fighting Takano Gomi at 160 back in the day to fighting Anderson Silva much years later at 185. So perhaps it's just Diaz way. Cowboy is known for being very willing to fight anyone, anywhere, anytime. So I guess he doesn't care. Uh, but Diaz Cerrone too. It's a fight that everyone can love, and of course any weight class. So if it's middle the way, bring on. In other news, outside the UFC, the ever-growing, the ever-popular Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship has welcomed yet another superstar to its organisation. Former WBA welterweight champion Paul Paulie Malinagi has signed on the dotted line to join this great organisation. Paulie did actually retire back in 2017 from the fight game and has recently worked as a commentator and analysis as well. So he has kept himself in the organisations, but yet to step back in the ring or the cage for some sort of bout. As soon as he joined the organisation, it became clear to maybe why another reason he wanted to join this company. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to rewind it back a little bit, back to when Mr Conor McGregor was taking on Floyd Mayweather. See, when McGregor was taking on Floyd Mayweather, he did bring in Paulie to help him train his stand-up and boxing. You may remember while we were waiting the anticipated fight between himself and Mayweather, an Instagram video coming out which Dana White posted of McGregor and Paulie actually sparring in the ring. Well, I'm sure you will remember that McGregor was seen to be knocking Paulie to the ground. It was only a few short clips of what actually happened in the fight, but Paulie, Ma- Paulie um, Malinagi, he has come out and he has said, well, why don't we release the full video of that, that sparring session? The reason he says this is he feels for the whole 12 rounds he was schooling Conor McGregor and the only clips that were shown are when McGregor actually pushed him over he felt. He felt he tripped and was pushed by McGregor and tripped. So in his eyes, 
he's got a little bit of redemption back in the past for McGregor, he feels like, humiliated him. So soon after this was a post on Instagram, Malinaji did leave Team McGregor's camp and carried on doing his analysing and commentating. So as you can imagine, he's joined this organisation and he's already called out Conor McGregor saying, I want a bare knuckle fight with you in this organisation. Let's settle this now and let everything be sorted and no more and let all the dust be settled to who really is the top fighter between us two. McGregor is a very popular person to be called out, as you can imagine. As everyone knows, McGregor brings the big money fights, as he knows as well, as he likes to tell every single opponent he fights. But I do feel Malinaji does feel a bit of revenge is needed here for the humiliation that he felt. And if McGregor does step in that, in that ring in bare knuckle fighting FC, one, he'll have to get a lot of money. And two, Malinaji hasn't felt a punch from McGregor with, those small, with no gloves on. Malinaji is used to taking punches with boxing gloves. And I feel if he takes on McGregor with no gloves, he'll feel the impact of a punch. And I feel McGregor might actually take this one. But don't count out a man who is actually a professional boxer in his rights and could easily knock McGregor out himself. This will be an interesting one to see, and me personally, I really do hope this does happen. I'm sure you've all heard from by now that Conor McGregor yet again has made the headlines by destroying a fan's mobile phone while the fan was attempting to make a video of him. Conor McGregor on Monday was arrested in Miami, Florida on charges of strong-arm robbery and criminal mischief. The fan who was filming him, which you may not have heard, has actually come out and made a statement about what actually happened that night. The English fan, you know, he went on to explain that he attempted to take a photo of McGregor with his phone and McGregor literally came across and slapped the phone out of his hand and then stomped on it several times before picking up the phone and walking off with it. Conor McGregor has recently been released on bail and is awaiting further information on what he may or may not be charged with. We'll have to wait and hear what happened to this one, but don't get me wrong, I'm sure it'll be the headline of every newspaper when the news is made and I'm sure we won't be able to miss it anywhere we look. Tim the Dirty Bird means, unfortunately last weekend, suffered, suffered double devastation to the hands of Nico Price. As well as being knocked out in the first round, Tim means unfortunately fell very awkwardly, breaking his ankle in a very gruesome way. As Nico Price was celebrating, Tim means struggled to get back onto his feet, stumbling straight back to the stool. This was a very awful sight, especially when we saw the damage that was actually done to his ankle, providing a very gruesome and awful injury, not to say the less. Despite coming out the actually the stronger fighter in the round, Nico Price showed his toughness by finishing the fight and unfortunately Tim Means was rushed immediately hospital after this bout due to the severity of his injury. Tim Means has now spoken out and said that he is going to require surgery on a very badly broken ankle and also injuries to his leg and his knee. But he did make a statement to all the fans just before going into the operating theatre. I do my best to leave it all in the ring every time so the fans can get what they paid for. It wasn't my night, I have to get surgery on a broken tibia and ankle. Nico caught me with a punch and my foot got stuck under me. We all hope that the 35 year old veteran recovers quickly and we see him back in the cage after displaying such a great show, unfortunately being knocked out. So, here's a shout out to Tim the Dirty Bird Means, we hope you get well soon and we can't wait to see you perform back in the cage again the way you always do. The refs have called it. This is Chris Allen. And John McElroy with your weekly MMA Power Hour news update. Coming up next is another knockout episode of MMA Power Hour with Colin and Adam. Until next time, let's have you now.
can you feel the power i hope you can mma power hour coming at you for another great exciting show colin crandall here so happy to have you with us uh, i'm happy to bring in a man who is voted the best bedside manner of all doctors in the national baseball league or major base major league baseball whatever the hell it is so uh please welcome uh, dr adam rorta congratulations on that honor <laughs> i am just super pleased to announce that that is completely false <laughs> it is uh, <laughs> thank well, you so much for the introduction you're welcome. i appreciate yes. it someone uh, give me bum information then <laughs> yeah, continue. yes good to see you dr adam Morty. you got something to roar about i hear <laughs> yes i do first off i, I want to say wow today's been crazy with facebook going down and instagram going down and whatsapp and there being so many issues everybody's just kind of what's going on uh good news is uh if you're watching this you found us on fight tv and if you were watching this after 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Wednesday evening anytime that is because we have gone ahead and put this on our Facebook page as well later uh, it, it's not something that uh, we can really help here but we are live on fight TV so thank you for tuning in with us here this week on fight TV and uh, jump on over to our Facebook page sometime check it out give us a like and and make sure to give us uh, some feedback let us know what your thoughts are and and we'd love to just interact with you guys over there uh, we will try to hump uh, jump in every now and then uh, excuse me it is hump day uh, but <laughs> definitely <laughs> uh, we'll try to jump in there and we'll, we'll try to jump in there on fight TV and, and interact with you guys there as well but uh facebook we're a lot more active and also on instagram make sure to give us a follow and a like while you're there i want to give a huge shout out colin to uh, uh you and your company cross train mma fighter for supp uh, supplying these awesome t-shirts these mma power hour t-shirts uh, make sure to go on over boys and girls to cross train mma fighter.com pick up a nice awesome t-shirt just saying hey i'm a fighter or hey I, I support the fighters uh and at least let people know you can uh, defend yourself when you're out on the street so they don't bother you at the bar but exactly <laughs> surprise how much a t-shirt can do to let you represent <laughs> your sport and uh, they are great great quality honestly i should be uh, i've been told by a uh, retail advisor i should be selling these for 39.95 because of how good quality i went you know with them and and the graphics and and the shirt the style how comfortable it is but we're going a lot lower because i want to get people uh wearing them and i want to make people uh, aware that we're trying to contribute and, and you know barely taking any profit in reality on them so hit us up for mma power across streaming fighter shirts dr adam Morta, continue roaring about definitely so also for all of you fighters out there and and non-fighters included uh if you need any social media marketing we work very closely with digi south go to digisouth.co and they can handle all of your social market social media marketing needs uh that they help us out tremendously and and i could not speak any more highly of them they are my go-to source for everything um i i decided to partner up with them just because they do such a great job and uh you know, I, I'm part owner now at this point, a very small percentage, but uh, uh, I, I love being a part of that team. And it's just because they do such a great job. They were very representative of everything that anybody does. If they take you on as a client, they are selective, but uh, they, they do a great job. Also, Combat Press, make sure to go on over to combatpress.com where every fight has a story. They're number one go-to source for all combat sports related news. And yep, as you see, they're down there in the corner of the screen. And uh, yeah, real easy, combatpress.com. All the news that you need is right there. Um, there was something that you said, Colin, that, that, that made me just want to uh, chime in here a second. Oh, uh, I also want to put out there, we are actually actively looking for sponsors. So if you want your name, logo, anything included, you want a shout out, you want uh, social media uh, shout outs, anything like that, go ahead and send us a message uh, directly on Facebook and we will get back with you and we'll, we'll see what we can get figured out. We're not looking to, to charge an arm and a leg or anything like that right now, but uh, we, we would love to pick up some more sponsors and, and get you guys involved involved as partners one way or another absolutely uh and we really do look out for our sponsors and we really endorse products that we believe in uh only and so i uh, would love to have you board and uh, at this early stage uh we're really going to be super reasonable and you know not saying uh, we're going to be charging millions of dollars at any point but we are working on getting a lot of production going and, and some distribution deals and a lot of partnerships and so uh, at this point we're really offering super reasonable uh, prices so love to get you in here uh you know when you can and possibly help blow you up as well so, anyway, without further ado, Dr. Adam Morta, if you can get on your great uh, mission for our first uh, guest here. And uh, there we go with the Skype. Let's do the old Skype dance. We are dancing. 
Hudson, but oh, M Macy, can you hear me? Hello, Macy, can you hear me? Hello, hello. Hey, Macy, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Awesome. All we need is for you to hit that video button. Uh, looks like the computer or camera with a line going across it, and we'll have video, and then we'll be all good to go. But while you're doing that, I'll give you the intro right here on TV. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, so happy to have this next guest. There you are, back on the show. And uh, she was the winner of the Ultimate Fighter uh, this past season and also just won her UFC debut at that huge stacked UFC 235 card, the awesome Louisiana native. We're talking about Macy Chesson. Welcome back to the show, Macy. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Now, we want to make sure, there you go. You were just off camera, but now you're on, so that's perfect. So, yeah, okay. so many questions to ask you, but I tell you, first, let me ask you, how did winning uh, this UFC debut compare to winning the Ultimate Fighter show? Uh, I mean, it's a little incomparable, you know, because winning the Tough Show was, uh, you know, that was pretty monumental step for me in my MMA career and for the, you know, the women's 145 division at the time. Uh, and then my debut, you know, it almost didn't feel like a debut just because I had fought so many times in the tough house. You know, I felt like I was prepped real well for my debut. All right. Now, speaking of that, I'm sure you did. And you're, you're mentioning that you did feel, you know, not like it was any shocking or, or, or really monumental thing where you where it was going to throw you. So I'm imagining there was really no adrenaline dump or, or huge jitters, but there must have been something that was interesting. And, and, and basically, like from what you were assuming it was going to be like, relate to us what fight week was like and how it was what you were expecting it was to be what it was going to be like and, and in what ways maybe it was different uh than what you were expecting yeah so actually fight week what fight week's always been my favorite week because i feel like it's a week for me to really rest recover do media and just focus on cutting weight you know um because camps are so long and they can be really intense and very mentally draining so by the time fight week comes it's almost like fight week is like your week it's your week you know as a fighter it's your week to focus on you and and uh and media and weight cut so um so that's kind of how it always is for me it's always been like that for me for fight week i try not to hype it up too much but you know as i continue on you know in my mma career i feel like it almost gets even better you know as the as the next fight comes and the next fight comes um fight week seems to always really improve for me um and uh i really just enjoy doing media and just kind of being myself and just being in my own little ele element I like it, and that's a, that's a great attitude, and that's why you keep on winning. I'm sure, along with your you know great attitude and your ability. But let me ask you: you had the challenge of of for the first time ever, I believe, fighting at bantamweight during all that. It, it almost sounds like you took that in stride, and that went without a hitch as well. I don't want you to give any way any secrets uh, that you don't want to give away. But but did that go fairly smoothly, and were you confident it would? You know what the secret is? The secret is is consistency and hard work. You know, and then people are just like in awe to believe something like that, you know, and it's just keeping up with your regimen and, and staying focused and disciplined, you know, um, there's no room for me to really do this or do that. You know, I had a really, I had an extremely strict and disciplined, uh, uh, camp. So, you know, 35, I just never imagined myself fighting at 35 until now. And now I can't imagine fighting at any other weight other than 35. I just feel so good at this weight class. Nice. Are you going to have to get rid of some of your wardrobe and, uh, and get some new uh, skinny jeans? Uh, I've always worn really tight jeans, so they still fit pretty well. Um, it's crazy because, you know, when I, when I saw my coach from New Orleans and one of my friends that always comes to uh, to fight week to, to kind of hang out and help me cut weight, they're, uh, they're like, you look really good, but, like, the only difference I see is, like, in your hips, you know, and everyone just carries weight differently. Yeah. Um, uh, especially females, you know, so it was it was kind of like a shock to them because they were expecting me to be extremely thin, and I just I just looked good, you know. I, I wasn't extremely thin so it was it was actually really funny when i saw them um but no i mean you know kind of 
gotten back to what you said earlier as far as fight week goes or you know fight day the difference in like the the finale and uh my debut uh, i think one of my favorite parts and with my coaches as well is when we walked into the locker room and we kind of just like saw everyone's name you know and just being able to have a locker among other really like amazing athletes you know and usman was in my corner was in my locker room and uh and perez was in my locker room so it was really cool to to be among you know other really great athletes and i think that's what really kind of like stuck out to me that must have been a great a great feeling and a great experience and were you intimidated at all or you just felt like hey i'm part of this i'm part of these guys Um you know, there's a little bit of an intimidation factor, but I think it's more like on, on a positive measure on a positive side. Um, but no, like when I walked in and I saw my locker and everyone else's locker, I just had like the biggest smile on my face. And I was just trying to embrace, you know, every single second and moment of that whole week, you know, not even that night. I just always have an amazing time, you know, when, uh, when I fight in Vegas and for the UFC, it's just, it's just been an awesome ride. Absolutely. And it shows. And I think attitude means a lot, as I'm sure you'll agree, combat yeah. sports and, and sports in general can be so much more mental than people think. Oh, and, for sure. Right. Yeah. People have no idea. I mean, it's 90% mental, almost 80, yeah. 90% mental. And the rest is just like that, that physical aspect, but yep. Yeah, it's it's a mental it's mentally draining. Yeah, absolutely. And you just seem to have a really good attitude and a really good focus and be able to compartmentalize everything and put it in the right in the right place. And that's cool. That's a quality that I think will help you a lot. Not every fighter has that. Uh, speaking about the fight, how about the fight? So you're in there against Gina Mazzani. I'm not sure mm -hmm. how much you're someone that looks at betting lines or if you're a gambler yourself or anything. Uh, right? No, I don't gamble. No, that's good. It's, it's better not to. I'm not a gambler, yeah. No, that's good. It is. It really is, you know, better not to do that because it's easy enough to have money fly out when you're earning it, much less right, gambling. Exactly. So, yeah. But but you might, you probably did hear that you were the favorite. Did you feel pressure on you? I mean, did you feel like they, people were saying, well, your only choice is go in there and take this girl out or else we just blew this whole thing and stunk out the place? Did you feel, were you hearing anything like that or was anything going on in your head like that? Or what was your mindset as far as that? Uh, I wasn't hearing too much about that, but I mean, yeah, I saw, I saw the favorite and I saw the odds and I try not to like hype stuff up too much like that, you know, because fights can go either way. There's always something crazy that can happen, you know, and, uh, and I'm really just, for me, it's just focusing on everything I've been doing in camp and, uh, and really just relying on all the things that I've worked, you know, thus far. And I try not to focus on that stuff like that too much, you know, because in the, in, uh, the finale, I was like, I'm pretty sure I was like ex the extreme underdog. And, um, it's just one of those things. Like I, I enjoy being an underdog. You know, I've always been an underdog and I love, love proving people wrong. It's one of my favorite things to do is to come up on top. Um, but yeah, for this fight, I noticed that was the favorite and I just try not to, I try not to hype anything up like that, you know? Yeah. Makes sense. That's the best way. Were you really hoping for a finish? Absolutely. I mean, you know, especially fighting in the UFC, I mean, you're always hoping for, for an awesome finish. I mean, it, it's what gives that wow factor, you know, and it, it, it's what really sets you off, Absolutely. you know, the pace yeah. as far as like you go in the UFC. So um, so yeah, I was really hoping for a finish, but sometimes a lot of times things don't really go your way, you know, and, uh, she did a lot of things that she improved on a lot of things that, that we thought maybe she might not have improved on, you know, so kudos to her for being the best, you know, athlete she could be against me. And, um, you know, I, I wouldn't want it any other way. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah. I like that. I like that respect between fighters. Um, was there any concern on your part that if the fight had continued on that maybe your cardio might not be there because of the weight cut oh no my cardio is great man no like and that that was really a lot of the questions and and concerns from a lot of fans as well I had people you know messaging me saying you're not going to be strong enough you're going to be weak and you're going to be blah, blah 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 and you know i mean people don't understand like my coach say if uh, he, him and, uh, my strength and conditioning coach, Mike Skasia and the UFC PI. I mean, I worked with all of them and they had really close watch on me. You know, they had all of my numbers, all of my PRs. And they, we started to find that as I was starting to descent and weight, my numbers were going up higher. So pretty much I was getting stronger. 
you That's know, awesome. and which is what a lot of people think opposite wise, you know, oh, she's going to be weak. No, I just leaned up, you know, I leaned up. I was really strict, very disciplined with my diet, you know, and, and as an athlete, that that's your job. It's your job to eat well and to take care of your body and, you know, and do the things you're supposed to do as an athlete. And, um, I think I'd really shocked a lot of people considering that I went up in PR, I went up in VO two max, my cardio and endurance was amazing, you know, and I could have went five rounds in there. That's amazing. That's and yeah, those are, those are things that are not usually related to dropping a weight class. So that is pretty impressive, you know, kudos to uh, your focus as well as your coaching and your yeah. nutritionist and, and you know, what they, what they do at the UFC PI. We mm -hmm. don't have a uh, copyright, uh, a, ability to be able to show the footage i don't think anyone does unless you're with the ufc so we can't show that but could you lead it could you give us like the the lead in to maybe 10 or 15 seconds leading up to the finish what you were thinking and what you were looking for and then you know what you ended up doing to get that finish yeah so the the start the start of the fight was pretty slow um just because she wasn't she cleaned up a lot of what she usually does in a fight you know we you know, my kickboxing coach and I, Nate, we, you know, he studied her a lot and we worked a lot of technical sparring and, you know, stuff like that. Uh, and, you know, it started off kind of slow because she wasn't doing a lot of what she usually does, you know, and I think she was kind of, she was trying to counter strike everything that I did. So eventually my coach was just like, all right, grab her. Coach was like, grab her, get your hands on her. So I, I clinched with her, put her against the cage and I knew she was going to do exactly what she did right it was she wanted to break out the clinch because she didn't want to be in a clinch with me and as soon as she broke out she ran straight back and uh we practiced a lot of angled off pressuring uh if she floats back towards the cage so um it was pretty it was pretty spot on i didn't even have to think about it i kind of just followed up as soon as she got out of the clinch awesome and awesome. are you able to hear your corner at fights or, or are you just in a zone or just the noise of the crowd kind of drowns them out Oh no, I can, I can, I heard my coach the whole time. Awesome. The whole time. Yeah. Awesome. And that's uh Fortis MMA, right? Correct. Fortis MMA. Yeah. They're really jumping. I forget who posted it somewhere, but there just seems like they're getting more and more high level fighters as the uh, weeks go by, aren't they? Oh yeah. Everyone's starting to, to rise up, you know, we're all coming up as a group and uh, we all know how to push each other and, it's it's always it's going to be a good year for us. Yeah. We have a lot of goals. I really believe so. I think you're a great group, and that's a, that and that's in Louisiana or that's in Texas. That's in Texas. So I also train. Uh, so my home gym in New Orleans is Mid City MMA. Uh, Sean Gayton is my MMA coach over there. So uh, he was with me in the corner. Uh, coach Saif was with me as well, and then my kickboxing coach Nathan. So uh, Nathan and Saif are here in, in Dallas, and that's where I currently live now. Very cool. And just yeah. a short just a short drive, what, three hours drive if you want to go back and visit your folks and people back? No, there. it's a seven-hour drive. Oh, no. Boy, was I wrong on that. But it's an hour and a half flight. Okay, that's not bad then. Yeah, so that, that makes flight. up for it. Yeah, it doesn't break the bank to one of those shuttles, especially no, if you... No, it's not too bad. I like that. Speaking about Louisiana, uh, another Louisiana native with a big fight coming up. Love to get your opinion real quick on this. You got Dustin Poirier. Yeah. Right? You're your Louisiana boy going up That's against boy, yeah. yep, Max Holloway at 155. And this is a rematch in a fight they had almost seven years ago yeah. at 145 when Dustin was only 23 and Max was only 20. You're probably yeah. biased on that for Dustin, your Louisiana right. brother there. But how do you think that fight plays out? And, uh, and you know, uh, is that or is that probably going to be one of the most exciting fights possibly in the history of our sport? I think it's going to be extremely exciting. I'm actually a really big fan of both guys and uh, I might be slightly biased because Dustin's my boy and uh, he's a great guy. I've always loved his fighting style and um, man, I'm really excited because they're both at their, the peak right now of yep. their MMA careers yep. and uh, they both look the best that they've ever looked. So I'm just, I don't even know what to say. I mean, I'm just excited to see that I'm going to be on my toes the whole time yeah. and and uh i mean of course i'm i'm rooting for uh dustin to, to take the win because that's my that's my guy uh but i really do i really do like max holloway a lot yeah he's amazing the hawaiian fighting spirit they have over there on yeah. that little island it's it's yeah amazing. very spiritual and he you know he lives 
amongst like the community and you know he's got he's got great characteristics and uh that i really enjoy so yeah both both great warriors and uh yeah. and it's gonna be interesting to see max fight at 55 uh people can point out that dustin subbed him uh but that was max's first fight at 20 years old and uh max has definitely improved since then so has dustin yeah. uh and, oh sure. you yeah. know what, and you know what sorry to interrupt you macy but you know what you know what surprised me a little bit is the betting odds they've got max at like almost a three to one favorite does that surprise you not really i mean max is like i said i mean they're both in the peak of their careers you know i mean max is just i mean his fighting style is is mma right now yeah i mean just just relentless ruthless you know dustin too though so you know i just i mean i'm just really excited to see it me too it's going to be amazing uh which fights at ufc 235 uh impressed you because i imagine you were able to go back there like we talked about you don't they don't let you guys sit in the crowd but when you went back after your fight did you watch all the rest of the fights or what did you end up watching and which fight impressed you yeah we watched we watched all the fights in the back um you know because we i was the second fight so that was pretty cool being able to watch all the fights after that um, I really like Tisha Torres and Zhang. I thought that was an amazing back and forth. I mean, just such a technical match. I mean, just everything clinch stand up, you know, they were getting all kind of reversals off of throws. It was, it was a very impressive fight to watch. Um, and it was really hard to watch someone lose out of that fight. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I, and I like Tisha a lot and I just, that fight was so, so close. Both women yeah. were so strong. Uh, Wiley looked like was the better wrestler, but Tisha was the better striker and was such yeah. a veteran and uh, a, a really tough fight. I, I, you know, and I think, yeah, kudos to both of them. They're both definitely here to stay. I like how Wiley was able to say in English that her name was, yeah, Wiley from China, remember me. That was kind of cool, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> She's trying to make a little statement, huh? Yep, yeah, yep. that was an awesome fight. Yeah, absolutely. And definitely other great fights. Ben Askren against uh, Robbie Lawler. Did you feel that was controversial? I'd love to have your opinion as a high-level UFC fighter. Did, did you, from what you saw, did that seem okay to you? Because I was yelling, he's out, he's out. And it yeah. seemed to he, me like he was out. He definitely what do you think? looked like he was out. His arm was limp, and it was almost like when uh, – when the referee um, like kind of touched his arm, it almost woke him up. But you yeah. know, I mean, it's their job to keep us safe. Yeah. And I totally understand that, you know, I understand what happened and you know, it sucks if he wasn't out. Uh, but then again, I mean, it's their job to make sure that you're walking out of that cave al cage yeah. alive. You know, I mean, it's just, it's inevitable. I mean, you can't, you just, that, and that's why he was just, he was a little mad for a second and then he's like, it's okay. It's all good. Yeah, absolutely. Robbie is a gentleman and a tremendous warrior. And, uh, I tell you what was kind of amazing was what he was doing, uh, when he slammed or spiked, uh, Ben Askren on his head. That was insane. That was nuts. How loud was it in the, in that arena? Even in the back, it must've been deafening. We were in the back. Yeah. We couldn't hear it, but we saw it and we were like, Oh my God, that's crazy. Man. I would ask Definitely want to see a rematch. That's for sure. I would like to as well. And at first yeah. I, I heard Dana saying no. And now it looks like he's saying yes. So I hope yeah, it's, I, I hope like it's to see a rematch. Yeah, me too. I really hope it's a yes. And then, and then Woodley against uh, Usman, like you said, Usman was in your dressing room. Usman was re really motivated. I mean, that mm -hmm. may have, that may have come down to him just being the hungrier fighter or him presenting something for, that, for sure that Woodley didn't see but do you I mean is do you think that's a situation where honestly it was all Woodley not showing up and being flat is that possible that just for no reason he was completely flat or is it really what your opponent is doing to you that makes you feel like you're flat yeah. and, and you didn't show up what do you think yeah I see what you're saying um I mean like it, it you you won't really know until you either talk to him or you're in his shoes you know yeah. I think that's just one of those things and and, you know, you have one fighter that's fighting to the best of their ability, but you have this other fighter that might mask all of those things, you know, and it's sometimes it's just really hard to see whether or not they didn't show up or, you know, just that other person's just outclassing them, you know, yep. and uh, Usman really just, you know, outclassed. And uh, I mean, he just so hungry and just such a good guy, like all around great guy and so deserving. Yep. I mean, you know, it, obviously was his time and he proved everyone ever everyone wrong i mean a lot of people had that you know were were rooting for woodley and would thought thought woodley would you know 
take them out and all that stuff. But you know, it's all, it's always really great to see someone who's like super deserving. Not that Woodley's not deserving. You know, I think, I think he is, you know, he's, he's been the champ for a long time, but uh, you know, it's, it's cool to see someone come out on top, you know, as, as far as being an underdog. Absolutely. I agree. And speaking about wins, this is something that I'm, I'm really anxious and excited to ask you about. Cause I haven't, I haven't seen people talk about this and it's, it, I think it would be really interesting. So without building up anymore, you mm -hmm. are doing something that so many people want to do and, and are not succeeding in doing it. Now, obviously you're not the only one cause there are other top high level fighters in the UFC, but why is it? that so many young people have a dream like you have but can't get to where you are and 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 tell us were there anything were there anything was there anything said to you along the way any coaching or encouragement or or anything that you did that made you feel that you were going to get there and 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 how can a young person who wants to be a fighter be one of the very few Macy Chessons that gets there when so many people can't? Any advice you could give or light you could throw on that, I'd really appreciate. Yeah. Man, it's like, it's been such a journey. You know, I've gone through a lot, you know, uh, emotional and physical stress. And it's so hard to say it's just one particular thing. But if you have any sort of like love or passion for something, you know, and, and you just stick to it and you keep going, you know, you put your head down, you keep going forward. You try not to worry about, you know, what anyone has to say, you know, and for the longest time when I was in college, you know, my parents really wanted me to graduate and, and get the, get a job right out of college. And, you know, I was in college when I started fighting and uh, I just told myself, I was like, I do not want to look back and regret you know, the decision, like, okay. Cause the, the fighting life is very small. I mean, I'm not going to be fighting until I'm 80 years old, you know? Right. Um, right. I do have that college degree to follow up if I want it. Um, and it definitely has like improved me as a person going to college and graduating college. But, you know, I remember being a senior sitting down at my desk and I was like, I I'm going to fight, I'm going to fight. I want to do pro. And, you know, and if I'm going to put my foot into something, I'm going to put both feet into it, you know, and I'm going to, and I'm going to run, I'm going to run with it. And that's just the type of person that I am though. You know, I'm very passionate about the things that I do. So if I say I'm going to do something, I always mean it and, and I'm going to do it, you know, and I've, I've had to, you know, uh, sacrifice a lot. I mean, I, was living with someone and, and I broke up with them just to, just to keep pushing forward in my career. And it almost sounds heartless, but it's really not because I had to put myself in really bad situations in order to get to where I am now, you know? And I think a lot of people are scared to make sacrifices because they don't want to get out of that com comfort zone. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's all about getting out of that comfort zone, you know, really struggling and being at rock bottom, you know, and then just moving up from there. Uh, and, and people are just really, really scared to, to break out of those cop comfort zones. Yeah, absolutely. Very true. How about the doubters? How did you process the doubters along the way? Were there a lot of them or were there hardly any of them? And, and how did you, how did you handle the people are saying, listen, Macy, there, it's unlikely that you are going to get to the UFC. Just face it. Hardly anyone gets there and it's unlikely that you're going to be on TV. It's unlikely that you're going to have people know who you are. Did you have people at all saying that? And if so, how did you handle that and how'd you deal with yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I had, you know, and even like in my close knit groups, you know, whether it was like coaches or, uh, or, um, or family members, but not in, not in like a really bad way, more of like, you know, maybe you should think about doing something else, you know, uh, just trying to guide me in the right direction. Um, and I think that's, I had a lot of doubters, you know, after it was like supposed to be my last amateur fight. I uh, fought someone who was way heavier than me, undefeated, and actually ended up getting like dropped, and they stopped the fight. Mm. And um, mm. and I think after that was like my decision on whether or not I was going to keep pushing through and work harder and get better, or I was just going to give up and just stop fighting. And um, I had a lot of family members saying like, you know, it's not safe, you shouldn't do it, or people saying like, you'll never make it because you know this happened in your amateur career. You know, but I think for me, that was just a decision, decision, you know, and I had to decide whether or not I was going to work harder and fight through it and put that in the past, you know, or I was just going to give up 
graduate college and get a, a desk job, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, those aren't easy decisions to make, but it, it all, it all goes with your drive and your mental state and, you know, your passion. And if you're really passionate about it, then you should run with it. You know, don't, don't stop just because you have all these other people telling you, you can't do it. You know, they don't know what it's like. They're not in your shoes, you know, and look at, look at a lot of people who are successful. It's because they're willing to do things that other people don't want to do. I like that. Very well stated. When, when, when you have those doubters, do you believe more in kind of not thinking about them and kind of letting it slide off your, your shoulders? Or do you believe more in like embracing it and letting it make you mad and going out to prove them wrong? Uh, I try not to let it really, you know, some, there, there's still some stuff that like angers me and like, it makes me mad, but then, you know, five seconds later, I'm like, whatever, like they're, I don't want to say losers because it's kind of mean, but it's like, I'm doing something that people wish they could do, you know? And it's because it's because I'm not allowing stuff like that to get to me, you know? And, and I'm just trying to stay a true person to myself and, you know, and just, and I just believe in karma and being a good person and working hard and, you know, and that's all you can say. That's all you can do for yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Any thoughts about when you want to jump back uh, into the octagon again in 2019 and any thoughts about who you might want to be in there with? Uh, we have a few people in mind, you know, obviously when you're, when you're, once you're ranked as a fighter in the UFC, you have to look at the other ranked fighters, you know, and once you get lower and lower, I mean, the girls get better and better, you know, and, um, and all the girls in the 135 division, none of them are, are easy at all. Right. So, it's, you know, it's kind of a decision that we're trying to look to make right now. And, uh, you know, I talked to Dana a little bit after the fight and we want a quick turnaround. We're trying to get in there as fast as possible, you know? So, I mean, we're hoping, you know, in a few months. Yeah, that would be fantastic. I'd love to see you then. I think a few months is a good amount of time because I don't think you received any bad injuries or took tremendous damage. I'm sure you took some, but overall pretty healthy right now. We got a little shiner. She got me good off of one kick. Uh, but no, we're pretty healthy. Uh, yeah, especially after I went back to New Orleans for Mardi Gras right after my fight. Nice. So I'm just trying to recover from that. But, uh, but no, we're back to training and and uh, everything's full force right now. So fantastic. Well, I'm so happy to talk to you again, Macy. I just, I really believe in you. And like I said it before your fight, I said, I think that you're dangerous and a batch, bad matchup for any of the women at 135. You have a great attitude. You have that Southern uh, class and charm and respect. And so you're someone that I really cheer for. And I know people watching uh, will do the same. So uh, I want to, I want to thank you so much for joining us once again on the MMA power hour. And uh, next time you find, out when you're fighting if you want to come before or after to talk about it we'd love to have you back and uh, and help promote you and cheer for you absolutely colin and i really i really enjoy talking to you guys and uh and just thank you so much for the support it's really nice having like true supporters out there and people who really just want to know you know who you are as a person and what kind of fighter you are and you know you you've done really well at doing that and so i i'd be honored to do an interview with you whenever you want so once we find out what's going on i'll give you a call I'll text you and We'll make it happen. Sounds great. Thank you so much for uh, those supportive words. They really mean a lot, Macy. And uh, we will definitely talk soon. You have a great night, and uh, we'll stay in touch. All right. Have a good night. Thank you, Colin. You're welcome. Take care. Thanks, Macy. You too. Bye-bye. And that was Macy Chesson. Very nice for her to say those, uh, uh, give me that those words of praise. That's a good feeling for our show, isn't it, Dr. Adam Rorta? Oh, absolutely. Thank you, Macy, so much. And absolutely. yeah, Colin, you, you do an excellent job of making sure we're getting to know everybody. And that's that's the point of the show, boys and girls, is, is get to know the fighters. I want to bring them to your living room, let you know more about them, let you get some insights that you wouldn't get anywhere else. You can go to any one of the other interview shows and you're just not going to get what you get here. Uh, we, we like to keep you guys in involved as well as much as possible. Uh, we're seeing some messages from uh, Keith talking about some stuff. Uh, Colin wasn't really aware that we were going to have this going, but I was able to pull it up uh, via fight. So we, we just did that. And tonight, uh, everybody that's on there, we're putting our focus on you. So 
Uh, <laughs> Keith, you know, that was funny, me picturing you as a chicken showing up at, at the tough family dinner. <laughs> yeah, I'm just seeing this now. <laughs> Keith is going to dress up all the time with the family. <laughs> I love it. You got your show. He says he does it all the time. Well, man. hey, I like that. Is, that. is that Keith our friend or a different Keith? I, I don't know. Some, <laughs> some Keith. Whichever doing... Keith it is, Keith, I appreciate but, but, the feedback. You, you know, you know, it's also making me picture you and me both showing up as as press with all of our press credentials, dressed up as chickens dressed with these chicken. giant oversized MMA power hour. Buttons that would on be our awesome. Costumes. You know what that rem is reminiscent of an old '80s movie. Movie with Richard Pryor and Gene Wilder, Stir Crazy, where they were uh, chickens in a bank working as uh, as uh, security guards, and then on their day off, some guys uh, stole their chicken outfits and wore them to uh, rob the bank. And then, of course, Richard Pryor and Gene Wilder get 150 years in prison or something. Classic movie from the late 70s or 80s. you got to check oh, it out yeah. if you haven't seen it. Richard Pryor, Gene Wilder, comic geniuses. Anyway, back to the seriousness, though. Really appreciate Macy saying those kind words. She's an amazing fighter who I think is going to have a fantastic career. She's off to a great start. She's super talented, a great attitude, and just a really, really cool person. So it really is an honor to talk to her, and it's, it's such a great feeling to know that she's happy to talk uh, you know, to, uh, to us here anytime so big respect and big thank you to macy chesson so dr adam uh, rorta we're getting ready? there we're close yeah, we're i have yeah, got to yep. edit a couple things here yes. real quick while you're doing that i will one, uh what am i gonna do while you're doing that i will say that we had some uh interesting fights uh this uh past week and uh, a lot of them oh here we go yeah Derek lewis against junior dos santos tough tough fight both guys are, are really really good guys uh i love to see junior dos santos you know continue to to win uh but i also love to see Derek lewis win he's got he obviously has i think a really bad back or a problem with ribs or an injury to his core and just a brave guy i've dealt with injuries like that and had to go spar and train Muay Thai and train BJJ. And that's just training with friends who aren't professionals. And, and that was difficult for him to have to train at a high level and then go in there in the, in the, excuse me, in the cage, uh, with an injured core like that is hard. And when you get kicked, uh, like junior kicked him, uh, amazing that he hung in there and surprised, uh, junior with that punch. I think he was baiting him in. I think at one point the, uh, commentators were saying they're wondering if he's faking it, but no, he wasn't faking it hung in there as long as he could. I think he was just hoping that junior would maybe get overzealous and, uh, and come in there after him. For those of you who want to see an amazing clip that maybe have not been in the sport for more than a few years, uh, Go ahead and check out on YouTube uh, uh, Scott Hands of Stone uh, Smith against uh, Pete Drago Cell. Absolutely incredible. Drago, very, very tough guy. Uh, one of the early uh, competitors uh, training under Matt Serra. And, uh, and Scott Hands of Stone. Is it Hands of Steel Smith? Yeah, right? Uh, was just a double, double tough guy in Strike Force, having had two amazing wars with Robbie Lawler. Uh, amazing body shot, buckle cell. Uh, uh, no, buckles uh, Smith. Cell comes in for the finish, and he gets finished. Bam, like that. So check that out. Anyway, Doctor, what do we I, got? I'm having troubles finding the Skype uh, ID for our next guest, oh. Isaac, right? Yes. Uh, he says we're just doing call. Uh, no, not. Uh, we're, we're actually needing to do it via Skype. Uh, Isaac, do you, do you have a Skype? Because we're trying to Skype call you. Question mark. Interesting. Do, do, do. thought we had do, that do, set. I don't know. Do, for, because we had it set last week for a Skype. It was. Yeah, we do have his Skype. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't find his Skype ID anywhere in all of my messages or anything. So That's strange. Uh, he doesn't have Skype. Okay. Well, that would be why. I got gotcha. you. Well, sorry, guys. Our bad. We were confident we had Isaac scheduled for a previous week, and we had all the information we needed, and I guess somehow we didn't. Doc, what do you recommend in this situation? Uh, me hold the phone or, or what? I No. Yeah, I mean, you can't hold that phone right by you because of the uh, re receiver. Uh, let me double check here. Let me see what I He's asking if we can do FaceTime. 
FaceTime. Uh, uh, the one problem with that is Facebook's not really working so well today, right. but right. I can see if I can do that, actually. We'll try to do that. Facebook's been having some problems uh, today all around the world, but we're going to see if we can uh, make that happen here. Sit tight for a minute, please. <laughs> this is the fun of None doing of a seems... live show, yeah. boys and girls. We, we communicate we're... as well as we can, as much as we can to our guests, and sometimes stuff doesn't come across. It can be our fault, their fault. It happens. Uh, we, we try to figure it all out and go with the flow. So we appreciate you for hanging in there with us today. Very much, yes. And uh, we will try to get this figured out really quick yes. here. Uh, in the meantime, I want to go ahead and give another shout out again to the same three awesome, amazing sponsors to our show. We've got DigiSouth. Uh, you can go over to digisouth.co to go ahead and get your social media marketing taken care of. And they are uh, literally the best. They get very personal. They figure out exactly what you need and will uh, ramp your, your numbers. And I mean, real authentic followers, yes. Uh, yes. interactions, everything. It's, it's not... Uh, <laughs> yep. If you, if you want to do it right, go to digisouth.co, talk to those guys over there. Uh, and, and I am helping out a little bit. Um, cross-trained MMA fighter for all all of your awesome T-shirts that uh, Colin's actually wearing them quite a bit here. And Not I today, but usually I wear yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, uh, and combatpress.com, yeah, every fighter has a story. Absolutely. Now, the digisouth.co, uh, not to be confused with diginorth.co, completely different. Does that even exist? I don't know. <laughs> I don't Stupid. know. Just the more silly to may, throw in there. Hey, it wouldn't be me if I didn't it. throw that in. Let me try to get comfortable here. Uh, so let me see here. Okay. Uh, we're trying to. So do we want to try to FaceTime with. We them? can't because it's not working. Okay. Let me see here. Um, okay. Isaac's apologizing and we accept his apology, of course. We tried and FaceTime. <laughs> FaceTime. We tried and FaceTime isn't working, unfortunately, due to Facebook issues. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think my profile was one of the ones that got hit the hardest today. I've been able to, I've, or have not been able to do anything. I've been trying to do absolutely everything I can with all the different social media marketing, handling everything there. Uh, like we're talking about Digi South and my involvement uh, as, as trying to help out with a few things today and got absolutely nothing done with that. And I uh, had to shift focus back to everything that we're doing here. Hey, and it's just been chaos because of Facebook and Instagram being down. Uh, let us know how that's affected you too. We've I mean, that's not fight news, but uh, let us know, interact, and, and we would love to just kind of hear what your thoughts are on this. Did it affect you? A lot of you actually run uh, groups over here in Facebook uh, with MMA, and I, I've noticed it, it, when it comes to Facebook groups, there's actually more MMA groups than a majority of any other market out there uh, in comparison. So it, it's really interesting. A lot of you probably run a group and, and have a lot to say, but couldn't. <laughs> keep up today so uh, did you jump on over to combat press did you jump on over to one of uh, their competitors what do you do let us know where you're getting your news when facebook is down um also uh colin uh th 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 there's so many amazing fights coming up yes, these matchmakers are doing so much better they really are sorry dr dr Edamorta. isaac is downloading skype right we'll, now we'll so, pull him in once he yeah, gets we'll it we'll pull him in once he gets it but yeah so many interesting fights so much uh so many great fights so little time right you know <laughs> by the way that was keith our friend our friend keith Schillen, great mma journalist and i noticed it was you dr Edamorta, that said he should come dressed as a giant chicken <laughs> he didn't say that you said that but then he, he said he does but he then does he said he does time. it all the time Time. Yeah, exactly. I love it. That's really, uh, that's a good thing. Giant chicken is a good thing. But Dr. Adam Rorty, yeah. What, uh, what, uh, what did you think about that amazing fight with uh, Nico Price and Tim Means, man? I love that. Both guys, I'm a uh, big hey, fan of. Hey, you can hear it on this show. There's one person and I said something before everybody else was, and you're, you're doing it with Nico. You've done it a, a few times. You know, between Johnny Walker and Nico Price, I don't know which one's more of an exciting fighter. Personally, I'm leaning towards Johnny, but Nico is, wow. Uh, I mean, just... It, 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 it didn't surprise me because you've yep. let me know about Nico, but I, I mean, he's, he's really thrown down here in this last fight and I, I'm excited to watch his next one. Um, man. <laughs> yeah. Very exciting guy. Chin, absolutely a chin of absolute steel. Uh, amazing. You can't hurt that guy. Really. Uh, shout out to Daniel, uh, Daniel Alexander. I appreciate you staying up late in Canada, brother. Big respect. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. Uh, Johnny Walker also great. But yeah, Nico price, just, just that warrior, spirit he has i remember when i was very young uh evander holyfield was coming up 
And I saw that in him as a cruiserweight, and I said, this man's going to be the next heavyweight boxing champion out there. Just that will, that strong chin, that grit, the grittiness, that determination, and, uh, and, 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 you know, just competitiveness. Let me pass this to yeah, you. Yeah, hand me your Adam. phone. Oh, that's right. Yeah, there you go. And um, and uh, so let actually, me, real quick, handle yeah, that for yeah, me. Yeah, so let me get in there and I'll give this back. Hey, are there you communicating you with him in text messages? Yes. Here, okay. There. You can, now you're on it. Perfect. So Perfect. yeah. So basically, that fight was really good. Tim Means was going back and forth. Tim Means is a great fighter, very skillful. The dirty bird. He's got some snap on his punch. Long and linky guy. So not a real super power, fast twitch uh, type of a of a of a of a guy but very very technical and he was doing a few of the stockton slaps as well as throwing in some punches he is accurate he is determined he has a good chin uh nico price was in trouble on a few occasions but i just kept saying man this price is a beast he's not going to be able to be tim means is not going to be able to take him out and uh, if means isn't careful then uh, price is going to touch him and that's going to be it and that was that spectacular finish uh, by Nico Price. So very, uh, very impressed with that. Look forward to seeing him uh, in action soon and hopefully uh, in an interview here on this show. So we're working on making that happen. Yeah, speaking of exciting fighters, I mean, bringing it back to Johnny Walker, do you see him coming up and, and, and uh, like really getting one of these – High ranking Top guys fights next? Possibly. I mean, he's fought twice in, in a really short period of time, and he's looked really, really impressive. I mean, yeah, let, let's let's look at the landscape at the light heavyweight division in the UFC. DC probably will never return to light heavyweight, uh, finding his home at heavyweight, and then soon to be retired. John Jones uh, has beaten Gustafson twice, even though the first time was disputed. Will that or won't that happen again? Probably not. You never know. Uh, I'd personally love to see Anthony Rumble Johnson come back, but if he does that will probably be at heavyweight also so that's out um then you have uh tiago santos who i think many people agree may be the most dangerous uh uh man to present the biggest challenge uh to john jones right now with his interesting uh capoeira style his great uh boxing skill his great movement uh as powerful a fighter as the light heavyweight division has ever seen. I maybe aside from uh, uh, Anthony Rumble Johnson, the aforementioned, but amazing fighter. So I think Tiago is next. Uh, Johnny Walker, though, with the size he has, I think he's actually like an inch and a half or two inches taller than John uh, Jones, and he's got this great relaxed style, super athletic, super talented, funny guy. I think of the weigh-ins, he was dressed uh, as Urkel, I think, from what the family <laughs> yeah, yeah, matter. Man, the, the family matters. Yeah, where did he pull that matters. off from? That show was like 25 years ago, and the man's only 26 years old, I think. Well, he, but, he, he might be getting the uh, uh, the humor. He must be tuning in and getting humor from us because we, we, we love these dad jokes. And, 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 and wacky <laughs> old stuff from 20 years ago. Yeah. Or, 20 you know, years. it's possible maybe over in Brazil they're showing the repeats of that in the recent years. It's possible in different places they will show uh, uh, TV. Uh, different shows get it. I'm still watching it online. Yeah, you can course. find all of this stuff. You can find everything. Online. Yeah, I think the guy that's Urkel is still acting in TV uh, nowadays. Isn't he it? is. I've seen him in a few different uh, shows and movies. A lot of TV movies, I think. But yeah, the, uh, I, I don't know. actually. You know what? I have seen him in the stands before uh, recently, within the last year, and on one of the pay per views for UFC. So uh, I do know he is. He is a fan. I don't know how big of a fan, but uh, hey. Uh, anybody Someone that is tuning in, if, yeah. if you are a even C-level celebrity, um, hey, reach out to us. We'd love to have you on, get your opinion, at least for five, ten minutes. Uh, reach out to us, and, and we'll we'll get back to you. Is, is he trying to reach out to us, he, He's got Here, let me let you uh, see if we can handle this, and I'll do some more freestyling here. I'm um, well, we're freestyling. Out. That's what we like yeah. to call it when we have moments like this. Uh, but uh, Yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay, so let's break down uh, some interesting stuff there. Uh John Jones, like we said, probably Tiago Santos, and then maybe Johnny Walker. Um, at heavyweight, uh, these are just some opinions off the top of my head. Uh, Stipe needs to be given a shot. Uh, Junior Dos Santos came out and said he thinks it would be really preposterous and ridiculous for Brock Lesnar to be in there, and, and it probably would be. Would it be fun and exciting? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't see Lesnar being DC unless they come let him come in jacked. Uh, to the gills with gear 
and uh, they're not going to do that. Speaking of gear, uh, there was a big, uh, interesting fight set up with a man who uh, I think may have only failed one test, so I think he is a clean fighter. Yoel, Yoel Romero against a man who I don't think had failed tests, but there was a lot of buzz around whether he was clean or not, and that's uh, Paul Enrique Costa, Paulo Costa uh, from Brazil, which is... Uh, a fighter that uh, does have one of those amazing bodies that that looks almost possibly like it could be too good to be uh, to be uh, uh, unenhanced, but maybe it's not. Otherwise, he's just got amazing genes and an amazing uh, diet and uh, and uh, you know workout routine. But um, but uh, yeah. Anyway, li listen. He did, he... You have a lot of these fighters out there that are. <laughs> It's just extremely stacked. I mean, look at look at the uh, Sage Northcutt over yeah, there. Yeah, shredded. Yeah, yeah, and Sage won championships. Right, sorry. exactly. Sage and and I think Sage is clean. He just literally started dieting and working out when he was like five or four years old. You know, which is amazing. But yeah, he's he's incredible. But yeah, in other words, though, you do it for five years, and if you focus on it strong enough, you, I mean, you, if your focus is on your diet, like a lot of these guys, the, some of them will go out and eat pizza like it's nothing in between fights. Other guys are just going to be focused on it. They're going to be very meticulous with with what they're eating, and they're they're going to look stacked. They're going to even have the the shoulders. They might even have forehead from their diet. Uh, and when I say forehead, it, it's uh, associated with human growth hormone. Uh, a lot of steroid users will start getting a, a little bit of a, a push right. out in their skull. It's really normal for the frontal lobe to push out when you're using. Uh, a, any type of uh, anabolic, substance, anabolic yeah. substance or even just straight human growth hormone uh, yeah. shots. Uh, but diet can actually do the same thing to you right. uh, if you have the right diet and actually not even be flagged, which is interesting because you, you, you get the, the HGH levels up high enough, but it's just under <laughs> right. the, the certain levels. And there are people that are doing this with the, the blood being tested and everything. I mean, I've witnessed it myself with wrestlers growing up. I saw this and I was one of those people at one point. I was stacked just because of the way I was eating. Right, just shredded, yeah. Isaac said he's calling, although I don't think we see anything, do we? There was something actually I missed. So tell him to try one more time real quick. And Oh, there it is. I found it. I'll call him. So okay. accept. And here we go. We will be going into this and he will be coming on. Boom. Awesome. Hey, Isaac, what's happening? Can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me, brother? Can you hear me? Can you hear us over there, Isaac? Isaac, can you hear us over there? Hello? Hey, Isaac, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you Excellent. Hear me? Yep, I got you. All we need you to do is press a button to get video. It's going to be the one button that looks like it's a monitor with a line going through it. If you can see that, we can have video uh, communication with you, and that would okay. be fantastic. So, yeah, once you can press that, in the meantime, I'll give you an introduction here online. Ladies and gentlemen, happy to have this next guest on our show. He is a great MMA fighter, having had wins in Strike Force in the UFC all over the world he is now fighting for the most respected bare knuckles boxing association the bare knuckle fighting championship we're so happy to have him on the show mr isaac valley flag welcome to the show isaac hey how's it going man doing good man so now i know you're only seeing a green screen don't let it throw you but as long as you're looking into that square you're looking perfect and everything will look great we're so glad to have you here we don't have a ton of time as we thought we were going to but we definitely want to talk and we'll definitely talk again but first i want to let people know isaac is going to be part of our team we're putting together a great new product uh, associated with mma power hour that's going to really break down uh fights and do a lot of other good stuff here so we are really happy to be connecting with isaac valley flag and so isaac Along with that, obviously, uh, you've got to be excited about your upcoming fight for BKFC. Um, you have uh, fought for uh, other organizations, but this is the most legit bare knuckle boxing uh, group with uh, David Feldman and Nate Shook. How are you feeling? Uh, and when and where is this next fight going to be? Uh, yeah, I'm super excited for, for this fight. Uh, it's going to be April 6th in Biloxi, Mississippi on the BKFC 5 card. Uh, sorry, I didn't have a chance to do my hair. I'm just looking at that right now. No problem. Really. No problem, brother. Uh, yeah, but uh, I, I'm really excited, man. Uh, I like the I like the bare knuckle format. <clears throat> As I've said in the past, I like that it uh, kind of eliminates the stuff that uh, that either I wasn't 
good at or I wasn't that excited about uh, and just kind of lets lets me punch people you know which is uh, which is what I enjoy doing absolutely how do, how does a guy train for bare knuckles because you can't be training with guys hitting you in the face in the gym and <laughs> busting you up so I guess you just train with like the light four ounce gloves or something like that am I right or, or what can you tell us about how training is and what what you think is is the best training for a bare knuckle boxing uh honestly i've just been getting a lot of boxing rounds in and then uh kind of transitioning between that and like some mma type sparring but uh but uh getting a lot of boxing rounds in working with a good boxing coach and uh and my kickboxing coach at different ranges uh and uh getting some good sparring in uh with some guys who are really really tough dudes out here in new mexico nice and um you uh who are you fighting what, what can you tell us about him uh i can't even remember his name uh no problem Pen Penedict, but is his name i believe and he's a tough journeyman uh he's, he's the kind of guy who is dangerous enough to 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 go out there and hurt me uh you know i still he's from mississippi i still think that i'm gonna finish him in the second round uh pretty confident in that but uh, but he's you know he's got boxing experience, he's got MMA experience, and so, um, you know he's he's a he's a guy who probably doesn't have much to lose and is going to go out there and try to knock me out, which is which is what I like. You know he's going to stand in front of me and he's going to bang, Absolutely. which is kind of plays into my my uh, style of fighting as well. Nice, you're going to be in his backyard. Does that bother you at all? uh no i i like getting booed sometimes it's kind of nice to hear it's the extra motivation and it's fun to uh uh fun to beat somebody in their own backyard you know i'm used to being kind of the underdog or not not really the fan favorite where i'm at and uh and i'm into it you know i, I like that feeling nice and i know you were training for years with jackson wink are you training with another gym you'd like to shout out now any support for for who you're training with yeah, so I'm you know, training at my gym, which is called Tier 1 Martial Arts and Fitness, and then I have a great boxing coach named Ruben Griego, my kickboxing coach, Terrace James. Uh, I'm going over to the Sanchez Brothers Boxing Gym every now and then for sparring, and then uh, this Thursday I get to spar with Fidel, Fidel Maldonado, who's called the Atrisco Kid, who is uh, arguably one of the best guys in New Mexico as far as boxers go. Nice. And you had, I think, one or two other uh, bare knuckles fights. Was it Was it one or was it two? I uh, was one other one um, for an organization that doesn't exist anymore uh, and, and screwed a bunch of people over. But, uh, you know, that was a, another one. I, I came out real. It was a fast knockout. I was really happy with it. Uh, learned some things about the bare knuckle game and learned some range and stuff like that. And, and kind of uh, so it was a it was a good experience for that. It just sucks that we didn't get paid. Yeah, absolutely. And I heard of that WKFB or whatever, some crap with a bunch of people getting stiffed. And that that that's that really sucks. The only positive that came out of it, it was a good win for you. And you got to see how it felt with your hands, um, you know, to, to hit with bare knuckles. I would imagine one of the difference in, in the bare knuckles is you're not going to maybe throw as many punches to the head just for the hell of it. Right. Cause the hands are not really going to take that. You kind of have to be more measured and kind of maybe just throw, throw more power shots, not to, not to give away your strategy, but what would you say generally that, uh, that fans will look for? That's going to be different you know, with regular boxing. So I was, you know, I talked to Cub Swanson about this too, uh, going into my last fight and after my last fight, and uh, I took more of a measured approach as far as finding my range and, and my targets, uh, you know, and kind of I let him swing a little bit at first. And, you know, if you watch my last fight, I for sure lost the first round uh, kind of intentionally just because I wanted to see what uh, what he had to offer. And I wanted to find the spots that I wanted to punch because, yeah, you don't want to go out there uh, swinging, just swinging for the fences like you you might be able to with gloves and hitting the top of the head and, and stuff like that. Um, right. You know, I, I, I'm old. My bones are brittle. I don't want to break my hands, you know? Yep. Absolutely. Uh, who else is on the card there in this uh, fifth event from Bare Knuckles Fighting Championship? Who's a main and co-main, do you know? Uh, Artem Lobov, the, the GOAT, is, uh, nice. is the main. And he's fighting Jason Knight, who is uh, – who a lot of people I think are sleeping on, but Jason's a really tough dude. And, uh, 
you know, Artem's a tough dude too. And, and that'll be a good fight. You know, uh, yeah. I know Chris, Chris Levin's on the card. Uh, Christina Ferreira, I think is on the card. Uh, and they had some other guys and of course I'm blanking on all their names right now, right. but, uh, right. it's, you know, the BKFC is putting together a good roster of guys. Uh, and you're starting to see some kind of top level guys starting to come over, including like Paulie Malinaji from boxing, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I, I'm excited to, to be on this card because of, uh, because of all the hype that Artem and the poly beef is kind of bringing and the fact that they signed Artem and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Great signings. Artem Lobov being a very good friend of Conor McGregor, training over there at SBG Straight Blast Gym in Ireland and having been part of Team Conor in the Ultimate Fighter a few seasons ago. Tough guy in his own right. Absolutely. Pauli Malinaji, huge signing, former boxing champion, great, great fighter. Um, you know, you almost wonder if Conor would be there if he hadn't gotten in this trouble smashing phones. Let me ask you about that. I'm sure there might have been times uh, when you were in Strike Force or the UFC, and, and hopefully times again, where someone would notice you on the street and stop you and say, hey, man, I love that fight or this or that. But do you, I mean, is there a point where you ever felt like if someone put their phone in your face and took a picture that you would have ever felt like grabbing it and throwing it on the ground? I mean, do you, do you feel like that's justified that Connor would do that? Or would you feel that you, I, you can't really do that to your fans? I just did that to my wife yesterday. Ah, ah, <laughs> tell me again. No, I'm sorry. I I left. Go ahead. Yeah, I totally get it. I mean, my wife tried to take a selfie with us, and I was like, "Fuck that!" and smashed your phone, and it was. Kind of <laughs> I love it. No, you know, I mean, obviously, a guy's personal space is his personal space. Um, in all seriousness, I I didn't smash my wife's phone. She's just right. sitting here, yeah, teasing. I figured that. But uh, but yeah, I mean, Con you know, Connor also has a personal life. You know, unfortunately, Connor's the biggest name in the sport right yeah. now, you know, yeah. uh, and you're going to expect some celebrity out of that. Uh, at the same time, you know, the guy wants to have a personal life. And I think that you just saw that. Uh, I don't know what, you know, I don't know what all the details are. And, and I'm sure Connor and that guy know. But again, um, you know, it kind of comes with the deal. So I think it's it's depending on what happened. I think it's kind of crummy that. uh that he uh that he smashed the dude's phone but i also understand the, the want for privacy you know yeah yeah understood and it may have been a paparazzi or someone but my thought of this if it's a fan you really don't want to do that if it's a photographer they're just trying to do their job but you know it's understandable you want your privacy what do you think would happen if a guy like connor showed up at an event like like the bare knuckles boxing or, or any other sort of event do you think there are any guys that for the hell of it would try to you know, cold cock him or punk him, or do you think he'd be relatively safe? Uh, you know, I, I think he'd be relatively safe. I would hope not. You know, uh, I know him and Polly have beef and I don't know, uh, uh, you know, uh, it'd be interesting to see what happens if they're both in the same place at the same time. Yeah. Uh, again, hopefully that doesn't detract from the show, uh, that, uh, the, the BKFC is putting on, um, you know, because that would be a real bummer, especially with the, uh, the sport being so new. Uh, guys are going to, you know, guys are going to have to act professional. I know beef is good to some extent, but, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to fight at your first event, you know, or your fifth event, but, you know, your first really large scale event. Yeah, I agree. And I think uh, a friend of our show, Chris Lytle, the legendary UFC fighter, is going to be involved with, uh, with the event, not fighting on it. He's fought on three, but I think he's working with them now. And, uh, and that's great because I know you know of him through friends and a uh, really great guy. When you see him over there, tell him I said hello and, uh, and, uh, and a vice versa, man. And, you know, I think you guys could possibly get some good training possibly soon uh, together. He's one weight division above you. Speaking of which, you're at 165. Are they giving that a name yet? Are they calling that like a junior welterweight or, or do they even give the names to the divisions there? Probably not, I would imagine. I don't know. I mean, they haven't said anything about the name for the weight class yet or whatever, but, uh, uh, you know, I, yeah, I mean, who knows, right? Yeah. Right. It's a class that you feel good about though. Cause I think your whole MMA career was at lightweight or am I wrong? Yeah, it was at 155. Uh, I fought at 70 and stuff too, but my, you know, most of my career was at 55, uh, and getting older, the weight cut is a little bit harder. Um, so I'm, I'm comfortable with the 65 pound weight class, uh, you know, 
obviously like when Paulie came over, uh, I started looking at what his weight was because, uh, you know, not the same kind of, I don't have any beef with the guy like Artem does apparently, but you know, it'd be great to fight a guy. The guy's a two time world champion. So, you know, being a fighter, I would love to fight a guy like that, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, and I think I'm a little bit heavier than him, but, uh, you know, given the right fight, I'll drop to, to a lighter weight, but right now I'm, I'm comfortable at 65 is kind of the long winded version of that. Excellent. And I think your body's got to feel in pretty good shape. Cause I think you've had what about three years off from, uh, well, actually you had your, you had your one bare knuckle boxing fight a few months ago, and then you had a couple years off. Would you say you feel, you feel pretty healthy or are you still nursing some injuries as much as you want to give away? I hope, uh, I hope oh, no. you're, you're healthy. I, feel, I mean, for, especially for my age, you know, like, uh, I, I've kind of, you know, I put myself through a lot of stuff, uh, you know, with, with some shit that I did and I, I've kind of, uh, got clean about a year ago from, from a bunch of stuff that I was doing. And this is honestly at 40, this is the best I felt in years. That's awesome. Uh, you know, I joke about being old, but you know, I, I push harder. I'm more present. I feel great about doing what I'm doing. And, uh, and I feel really good about, about, this fight and my physic and how how physically fit I am and mentally fit I am going into the fight. That's awesome. And I know Chris is about four or five years older than you and he's been killing it uh over there at BKFC, so there's no reason why you can't, man. I'm excited to see it. Can I get your opinion on a couple of big MMA fights coming up? I know that's something we're gonna do in a program that there we're gonna star in coming up in the next several weeks, but can I bounce a couple of things off you right now? Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate it. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into the pros pick segment. Isaac has been kind enough to agree to that. Pros pick is brought to you by Digi South. So jumping into this, you were always a super technical fighter. You always seemed like you were uh, a, a chess player to me. <laughs> that's you, you the first know. time any ever called me super technical, really? <laughs> but that's... <laughs> well, you know, I, you know what I think? It just seems like you kind of knew what was going on. You seemed like you were able to slow things down and you were able to relax in there and you were able to really see what your opponent was doing and do stuff to counter what he's doing. And so there are a lot of fighters out there uh, that are not like that, but there are some that are. Uh, a couple of the fighters that I think are super intelligent and they're uh, a weight class that you used to fight at at MMA 155, and that's uh, Max Holloway jumping up in weight to the light heavyweight, uh, sorry, to the lightweight class from featherweight uh, to rematch a man who beat him six and a half years ago, Dustin Poirier. Remember though, Max Holloway was 20 years old and that was his first UFC fight when Dustin Poirier beat him. Uh, Poirier, and that was at 145. Can you break down that fight? Tell us from, from a professional high-level fighter's uh, opinion, what people might not be thinking about that we need to look for in that fight, how the weight might affect Max, and, uh, and, and how they compare now as, as, as compared to what, what it looked like six years ago when they fought. Man, uh, that one for me, because because Max is coming up, you know, he might, and Poye seems to be doing actually a lot better lightweight than he did at 45. Yes. Uh, because of not cutting weight. Uh, look, I like, I like Poye a lot and I like Max a lot. They're both like really good dudes and really good fighters. Uh, I think Max, Max is just always, he always impresses me every fight that he has and he seems to like, level up every single fight so uh, you know i think i know poirier is hungry and motivated and, and kind of uh i mean he's ready to, to, to kill something i think he's going to have a hard time with max though you know uh like you said max was max was 20 at the time and and i think he's on a different level uh than a lot of people right now you know no matter what, what weight class you're looking at you know yeah, that almost seems like a, a for sure fight of the night fight, though, wouldn't you think? Or maybe even fight of the century? Yeah, yeah, I think it's fight of the night for sure. Um, it'll it'll be it'll be cool to see. I you know I don't think it's going to be like the Ortega and Max fight where where Ortega is just kind of getting beat up and is tough enough to to kind of keep going like Dustin's a really tough technical fighter. He's got really good hands. He moves really well. Yeah. Uh, his ground game, my friend Cub fought him and said that his ground game was a lot better than, than he expected, yeah. you know? Uh, so, you know, that, you know, Max's ground game is pretty sick too, but that, that might be the deciding factor, you know, cause Dustin, 
Um, I think Max is more creative standing up, but Dustin is is kind of more technical. Yeah, he hits, um, he hits harder too. I think Dustin. Yeah, and he hits way harder. You know, um, it'll be interesting. I, I don't know, man. That fight's hard to call. Um, yeah, yeah. Again, just because it is like. I feel like a lot of fights you can just be like, oh yeah, for sure this guy's gonna right, win, right? You know, or or have a pretty good idea, right? But that one's kind of tough to to call, you know. Yep. Uh, both guys are at different different points in their career, and they're kind of their learning curve than they were when they first fought. So that's gonna play into it. The weight's gonna play into it, you know. Uh, not having as big of a cut for Dustin is playing into it, and, and Dustin's in a different place mentally than he was. And, and so is Max, you know, yeah. even even though Dustin won, he's he's now like even more motivated and I think more confident. Yeah, and he's probably even more hungry since he still has not, I don't think, even been in a world title fight unless the fight with Connor was where he got blasted out of there. But he's never tasted the gold and he, right. he's still, you know, definitely hungry for that. How about another super exciting one? Justin Gaethje against Edson Barbosa. That might even be crazier. And more uh, exciting. What do you think? I think that's going to be a faster fight. I think Gaethje's going to pressure him, and and uh, and Barbosa doesn't do well when guys pressure. Okay. Um, you know, I think I think Gaethje's going to. I honestly think Gaethje's pressure is going to pay off real early on, uh, it, with the first round or second round knockout. Is Gaethje going to try to throw any any level changes at him or shoot at all, or, or you don't think he needs to or will? I don't. Uh, look, once you get Barbosa's boxing has gotten better, but once you kind of get inside of his his big weapons, which are his kicks, yeah, uh, you know he does he does not do well backing up. He'll he'll stand up straight for you and stick and kind of stick his chin up, you know. Um, so I don't think Gaethje's going to have to. I think that you know, I mean, or I think that Gaethje's going to find his chin pretty early on you know yeah yeah and he's got to avoid those kicks but he knows that so he'll probably be looking out for them you know and being prepared is uh, important how about a, a fight between a guy who you probably know jorge masvidal i think you were uh, at strike force and the ufc uh when he was there uh and i also think just like you he's a really intelligent fighter uh, an amazing veteran but against darren till is he maybe going up against a guy that's too big for him and, and too fresh and too young? I don't know. What do you think in that matchup, the one coming up this Saturday in England? So to be honest with you, I, I really don't know that much about Darren Till. Uh, I've never never really kind of never paid attention to him that right. much. I know he's a challenger, and I like Jorge. So, uh, you know, I would – I know Till's got good kickboxing. Uh, I, Jorge's got – really really good boxing uh and I, I would go with i'm gonna i'm gonna go with jorge just uh, simply off of motion because i like i like the dude the way the dude fights yeah uh and again i don't know a whole lot about till i know that sounds bad but no. i just never i never paid that much attention and i think when he was getting big big i was kind of busy fucking my life up yeah i hear so. you I hear you're saying, yeah, a few years back, and that's totally understandable. You can't be expected to know every fighter. Last one is, uh, how about Gunnar Nelson against Leon Edwards? I, I wouldn't blame you if you don't know Leon Edwards, a British fighter who's uh, kind of on the upswing. But Gunnar Nelson uh, from Iceland uh, just came off that big win against uh, Charles Calby Oliveira where he got mount and just smashed the shit out of Oliveira's face. With uh, with a big elbow and a ground and pound in a fight that he was the underdog in, do you think Gunnar Nelson can beat an upcoming young, uh, talented, athletic striker like Leon Edwards or uh, or not? I think so. I mean, Gunnar's like <laughs> Gunnar number one has the has had the best training video out there in recent times. The one that he just put out there. Um, I don't know if you saw it, but it's essentially him just doing aerobics, which is amazing if you haven't seen it you need to check it out but um definitely Gunner, Gunner, i mean he's the dude is talented like seriously talented on the ground and like the way he closes distance and kind of i mean the, what he does on the ground is just different worldly you know um so i think that i mean like and he's tough too you know so i think no matter what i think gunner is winning that fight on the ground again and, and yeah you know, it, it's it's hard. It's funny because every fight you go out there and you like look at the dude, 
and you're like, this dude's gonna get the shit kicked out of him, and then he just fucking balls people on the ground, you know? Yeah, he's kind of was he was almost like the alter ego of Connor. They trained together a lot in Ireland, uh, and I think in Iceland as well. And 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 from the beginning, Connor was outgoing and boisterous, and Gunnar was always quiet with this cool, you know, Nordic uh, Viking uh, type of an attitude, and just a really cool dude. Seems really relaxed, has a style on his feet similar to Connor for a little while, but then he really has the grappling that uh, that comes in there and is a really, really strong guy. I remember a lot of the guys from Iceland uh, winning those strongman contests. Remember back they had uh, John Paul Stigmerson, yeah. Magnus Vermagnuson, and yeah. just some super, super strong dudes. And so I think that, uh, yeah, I think he'll win that too. Well, there are a lot of great fights coming up, uh, man, and we're going to talk about them and we're going to work on uh, the show going on Thursday. Hopefully within the next few weeks we'll be in touch, but we're looking forward to uh, this man, Isaac Valley Flag, being a huge part of breakdown and analysis for big upcoming fights. And uh, so don't miss it. We'll let you guys know when that happens. We'll be in touch on that, Isaac. And if there's anything else you want to shout out go ahead and actually please go ahead and shout out again the date and the venue and how people can get tickets for your upcoming uh really great uh bare knuckles matchup with the number one and really probably the only legit u.s bare knuckles boxing association the bkfc yeah so it's the you know bkfc uh april 6th it's going to be in in uh biloxi mississippi at the uh gulf the golf port center or the golf mannequin i think it is golf port i think it might be golf port yeah, center, golf yeah. port center yeah. uh or golf port and arena and uh and i know if you can't be there it's going to be on the fight.tv app uh you know if you can get be there it's going to be on Ticketmaster. i know some other people have been posting stuff about having tickets online but uh you know with with all the fights on this card it's it's one that you don't want to miss uh i think that they keep putting on I mean, better shows each time. You know, last last show was a banger, and this one has some bigger names with potential, like, really serious fights, and the main event's going to be great. Uh, I want to make it a quick night and, and uh, see if Paulie wants to fight because it'd be an honor. I'd love so. to see that happen, man. So I'm going to be cheering for you. Look for a quick win uh, and victory uh, for Isaac Valley Flag. Then love to see you and Paulie Malinaji. Uh, we're going to be cheering for you, man. I appreciate you taking the time uh, to jump on with me here in the MMA Power Hour. We'll look forward to working uh, with you down the line uh, for our fight breakdowns, man. Thanks, Colin. I appreciate you having me on, bud. You're very welcome. Have a great night. You too. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Isaac Valley Flag, super cool guy. Very good breakdowns with the fights. And uh, he's going to be even better when we definitely have uh, a whole roster of fights to go over. This was just spontaneous, as you all saw, and still was right on it and even admitted if he didn't know this fighter, that fighter. We'll, uh, we'll be breaking out great stuff with him with uh, an assorted group of popular fighters and uh, and myself so look for that in the next few weeks so doctor whenever you want get working on the uh, next but Abs uh, absolutely I, i'm super stoked you guys heard it here first on fight tv tonight uh or or not anywhere else obviously uh hopefully we get this up on facebook soon everybody make sure to go ahead and download the fight tv app if you have not yet at this point uh and subscribe to our channel so that way in case facebook goes down and you're normally just wanting to cruise facebook and listen to us at the same time if that's what you normally do but still want to keep up with everything make sure to come on over here because facebook uh, is having issues and uh from what i hear they're setting up to make a lot of changes and uh we may be dealing with a lot more issues over the next so a period of time and i just want to make sure you guys can catch our show every week every wednesday at 6 p.m we are here i want to give another huge shout out to combat press while we're at it go to combatpress.com where every fight has a story uh they're my go-to number one go-to source for all combat sports related news uh we do have some crickets in the background that decided to come <laughs> into the studio i don't know if you guys can hear yeah it, but, the uh, crickets are here getting continued doctor <laughs> we, you know what we, we have such a story we had the fireside chat yes. with uh uh gene labelle, gene LaBelle a while gene LaBelle, back yep. and and we didn't even have to uh, create a cricket effect because we had in-studio cricket the minutes way in. We had that happen again tonight. When a uh, big star like that comes out, even animals and insects want to listen. So, oh, I mean, it was crazy. Yep. But uh, Okay, so we do have our next guest coming up, and I, I'm setting up here. Perfect. Um, While you're doing that, I will carry the ball. So, Dr. Anamorta, all kinds of great stuff going on, and, uh, you know, we're looking forward to it. And uh, we're going to be uh, bringing in more content, better content, all kinds of great stuff. Want to shout out uh, our great friend. 
friends who do the news in the beginning from the United Kingdom, from Scotland, uh, John McElroy. Thank you so much, John. A great job as always. From England, Chris Allen. And thank you so much. And, uh, you know, subscribe, or as they might say in the Scottish part, subscribe to our show, please. We would be very <laughs> grateful uh, for you. And we really appreciate our friends from the UK, from the US, from every country and continent. Uh, we're so grateful for our contributors and our watchers, listeners, fans, and friends. Uh, okay. Definitely. We're getting there, Colin. Hold on. just a, Not a problem. Uh, uh, Not a problem. So while a doctor is doing that, uh, Till and Masvidal, interesting, interesting fight. You know, I think a lot, the way a lot of people are looking at it is uh, Masvidal fought most of his career at 155. Till is a big, big 170. Um, Till probably is going to walk in there just under 200 pounds, and Mas. Vidal will probably walk in there maybe 182 or 3 pounds. So he'll be giving away probably 15 to 20 pounds uh, in this fight. Height is similar, maybe an inch and a half height advantage or something for Till. Uh, youth on the side of Till, uh, experience and crafty veteran uh, skills, Ooh, huge on the side of uh, of Jorge Masvidal. So love to see a great fight. I think the longer Masvidal can stay in it, the better. Uh, Masvidal likes to bang. He his, He's a well-rounded martial artist. He can wrestle, though. Might be smart for him to try to get, uh, get uh, throwing the level changes at uh, Darren Till ASAP here. Uh, in this fight, but uh, you never know, man. Love to see that. I mean, excited to see that fight. Love to see a great battle. So, we are doing the Skype dance here. Hey, Kyle, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Excellent. All we need you to do is hit the video button and we will have video communication and we'll be off and running. There you go. Perfect. Let me give you a uh, great intro first. I want to thank you so much for waiting. I think we're five or six minutes late. Appreciate your patience, brother. Yeah, that's all right. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. So I am uh, happy to welcome this next guest on the show. Hot prospect fighter in the UFC from Canada, Kyle the Monster Nelson. Officially welcome to the show, Kyle. Awesome. Thanks for having me on. My pleasure. So you're a, a hell of a fighter from Canada. You you are a highly touted fighter. Uh, in the first fight, they gave you three days notice to go into a higher weight class that you normally don't fight in, and you still did darn well. So they were excited enough, and they always believed in you anyway, that they're bringing you back here, and this time you're going to have a full camp. You're going to fight in the weight class that you're normally fighting in. So much more ideal situations. It seems like that's kind of the way that a lot of most everyone is getting their break not most everyone but a lot of fighters getting their break in the ufc they're basically saying hey let me bring you in here in an absolutely terrible circumstances and are you willing to step up and jump in and the guys like yourself that say yes i am are the guys that have a ufc career was there ever a thought though to say well you know eh, maybe i might have to pass on that probably not i would imagine or or what was your thinking because it was definitely not great circumstances that they wanted to bring you in but i have a feeling you didn't hesitate to say count me in yeah, no, as soon as we got the phone call, uh, I agreed, um, even before we really knew who the opponent was or the weight class or anything like that. Nice. I knew, uh, you know, the UFC really only calls once, and if you, uh, you know, if you say no, then that's kind of it. So yeah. Yeah. I jumped on the opportunity. Absolutely, and you did have a very good performance there, uh, albeit not in a winning effort, but looking very good and impressing a lot of people and, and knowing that you could hold your own, uh, even in a weight class above on three days' notice. The difference between having virtually no notice for a fight uh is the difference between someone saying to a weekend athlete that you know i need you to run this distance or do this sport with two weeks notice or saying you got to go do it right now so it is a big difference very very much not ideal to fight on three days notice but anyway forget about that for now because we're moving on we have a fight where you are getting a full camp you are fighting in your weight class let us know the where the when and the who uh for that upcoming ufc fight yeah, so I'll be fighting May 4th in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada at the Canadian Tire Center, and I'll be fighting Matt Salas. Absolutely uh, exciting, and uh, that is about uh, a little bit less than two months away over in your home state of Canada. And what's that going to be, a two-hour road trip for you or something? Yeah, yeah, it's super close. Um, yeah, where I live uh, and where I train, it's uh, really close to Ottawa. So, you know, we're going to have lots of friends and family and fans you know, are going to be able to show up and support me. That's awesome. Is your opponent Canadian as well? I imagine not. 
No, no, I believe he's from uh, California. Okay, that's cool. And uh, so what do you know about this guy, Salus? Are you, are you a guy that looks at a lot of tape, and how much tape is there on a guy like this? Uh, yeah, so I've, I've seen, uh, watched some tape on him. You know, I also let my coaches watch some tape on him and the rest of my team, and then, uh, you know, we kind of build the game plan around that. Uh, he's fought on the Contender Series, so Dana White's Contender Series, and he's at one fight in the UFC. So there's a bit of footage on him and stuff, and we know he kind of trains uh, with Dominic Cruz and those guys, so we know the kind of style of the gym that he's coming from, and from the footage that we've seen, uh, we're able to put together a pretty good game plan. Very cool. What's your background, man? Give us a little bit of backstory about how you got into MMA. Were you participating in sports? Did you were you always in martial arts? Which martial art did you get in first? Tell us a little bit about uh, uh, the transition from being a guy who was not even an amateur MMA fighter to getting into amateur and and then pro fights. Uh, yeah, so it all started uh, when I was about four or five years old. I watched Rocky for the first time, and that really motivated me. I wanted to be a boxer uh, from a really young age, but it wasn't until uh, I got into grade nine, so I was about 14 years old, uh, that I started to actively try and find a boxing gym or something like that. But uh, coming from a small town in Huntsville, Ontario, there wasn't really any boxing clubs nearby. So the closest thing I could find was a kickboxing club that also did jujitsu. So I started doing uh, both kickboxing and jiu-jitsu classes and then that was right around the time the first ultimate fighter came out so I, I started watching that season and that was the first time i had ever heard of mixed martial arts or the ufc or anything like that and i was like well that's basically what i'm already training because i was training the jiu-jitsu the groundwork and stuff and then training kickboxing and stuff the stand-up so i was like well maybe i'll give this a shot and then i started with uh, amateur kickboxing when i was uh, 17 18 years old and then went and did a year of uh, amateur mma when i was 19 and then turned pro when i was 20. Very cool. And it sounds like you started with uh, with uh, martial arts cross training early. You in Canada, almost every kid plays some hockey. Were you playing some, or were you one of one of the few guys that didn't play? Yeah, no, I never really got into hockey. I never uh, learned how to skate, so uh, I just never never got into it. Uh, but everyone else played, and uh, I played a little bit of basketball and then baseball and stuff like that. But uh, wasn't really a big fan of team sports. Uh, you know, I always. Uh, liked sports you know single person sports where it was kind of just me versus the competition so yeah that's why i kind of got into mixed martial arts too very cool having been in uh martial arts training early i'm sure your parents and family got to see that you liked it and you excelled in it was there was there a feeling that they had that you might want to go into it as a career and 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 when they found out that you were interested in it was there support or discouragement or was it mixed uh, no, yeah, my mom and dad have always been super supportive. So obviously when I was 14 and started training, I couldn't drive or anything. So they would drive me, you know, two, three times a week, uh, sometimes four times a week down to training. And it was, uh, you know, about half hour, 45 minute drive. And uh, yeah, they did that until I was old enough to drive. And pretty much as soon as I started training and, and watched the Ultimate Fighter, I let them know that that was kind of the game plan uh, for my career was to be a UFC athlete. So uh, they were super supportive of that. Um, uh, you know, it's it's a pretty big uh, dream, especially to have coming from such a small town and in Canada. And back then, you know, it was very, very few uh, Canadian UFC fighters, but uh, they were super supportive the whole time. Very cool. Who were some of your influences as far as Canadian MMA fighters uh, that were that came before you? And did you ever get a chance to meet or train with any of them? Uh, yeah, so definitely George St. Pierre was, uh, you know, one of the biggest um Influences, I guess, uh, you know, in 2005, he, I don't, he wasn't quite champion yet. He was just coming on to the, you know, he was climbing the ranks of the UFC. Um, and then I was able to uh, train with him a little bit when I was 15. So it would have been around 2016 or so. And, uh, you know, he came and did a seminar in Toronto. So I was able to train with him a little bit and uh, was able to talk to him and take some pictures and stuff. So that was pretty cool. And then after I turned pro uh, a few years back, I went to TriStar and was able to train with him again. That's awesome, man. That that must have been really cool. Did, you know, not to give away too much, but were there secrets that he had or strategies or or, or any words of encouragement, anything that, that you could share maybe to someone younger uh, than you uh, that, that GSP shared with you that really encouraged you? 
Uh, you know, I mean, he was, you know, he's a very, um, almost like a traditional martial artist. Like yeah. he's very into uh, martial arts as a whole and stuff. A mer- very uh, motivational, uh, you know, a super kind person, a caring person. So, you know, he's an awesome guy to uh, to be around and just to hang out with and talk to. You know, he's not, uh, you know, super macho, doesn't have a big ego or anything like that. Um, and super, uh, super hard work ethic. And I mean, that's kind of what uh, it all boils down to, you know, you can't, it's the same with uh, any sport or any career, really, you know, you need to have a really strong work ethic and you need to be determined and, you know, a lot of self-discipline and, uh, you know, that's, uh, you know, my best advice to future mixed martial arts fighters is, uh, you know, you do really got to work on that self-discipline and, uh, you know, that's going to be your, that's what's going to take you to the top makes sense you're over there at house of champions and is that in toronto or where's that uh pretty close so we're in stony creek which is uh you know we're only about an hour from toronto so it's a uh, pretty much the same thing and is there any is there an open door policy if you at least have some sort of a fight record or you want to be a fighter what if someone liked uh what you're saying here and said man i'd love to 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 train with him and and you know get get to maybe be where he's at uh one day what how how would that work and uh, and are you looking for guys of certain weight classes or or what uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, the House of Champions, we have uh, everything from beginners to, uh, you know, professional fighters. Um, you know, I tend to work a little more with the pros, but yeah, I mean, for anybody that wants to come in and start trying it out, uh, you know, start with uh, some of the beginners and work your way up and eventually you'll get to work with uh, some of the other pros. Um, and yeah, as far as uh, like the training camp and stuff, I'm working with, you know, guys my size trying to you know, avoid going with uh, anybody like 200 plus pounds. I know my opponent, uh, you know, likes his footwork and he's pretty fast and stuff. So I try and uh, keep working with uh, guys my size that are fast. Absolutely. You want to shout out any of your training partners or any of your coaches? I'd be happy to have you do it. Uh, yeah, I mean, my, my head coach, Alain Halmagin, he's uh, been instrumental in basically everything I've done so far in my pro career. Uh, my my old coach, Bill Quinn, uh, he's kind of what started me from the bottom to uh, to get me up here. And then my wrestling coach, Adrian Woolley, um, and then uh, Lowell Grebe and uh, Aaron Zadek, they were both... Uh, you know, huge parts of my professional career, especially with, uh, you know, uh, cutting weight and kind of getting all the science behind the fight prep. Very cool. And Canada is really uh, embracing MMA. I, I know that over in the UK, there's a really big boom. Uh, I, I think here we're still going strong in the US, but I think we had a really big boom maybe seven or eight nine years ago where is canada on that is is it just becoming in the last couple of years even bigger or do you think it, it, it was at its hottest when when george was uh you know was it was in his prime a few years back or where do things stand is it is it, is it getting even bigger or is it just kind of staying where it is or, or when 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 was or is the peak of popularity you think uh if it has happened yet indeed in canada uh, so in Ontario, uh, mixed martial arts became legal in 2010. Oh, wow. Um, and then the UFC came here, and so really spiked around 2010. Um, you know, when it first became legal, then obviously lots of uh, shows were, like, coming to Ontario, and, and a lot of promoters were popping up and stuff. So it was super popular then. Uh, then it died down a little bit. Um the Ontario Athletic Commission is a very strict commission, so it, it makes it hard on some of the smaller promotions. Uh, so it died down for a bit, but I think we've been steadily growing back uh, since then. But yeah, definitely having you know stars like George St. Pierre and stuff helps bring in kind of the more casual fans. Uh, we have a lot of um, the odd local show and stuff around Ontario, but it's usually maybe a little more hardcore fans or uh, local fans of the local fighters as opposed to, uh, you know, the mainstream fans that uh, somebody like George St. Pierre would pull in. Yeah. I remember you used to have MFC. I'm not sure if you still have that there. I know that, uh, that, uh, that uh, Antonio McKee was over there and I know you had the late Ryan Jimmo as a champion. Remember when he was a champ over there at MFC? Yeah, yeah, and I haven't heard much about MFC in a, in a long time, so I don't, I don't think they're still going. 
No, I think they may not be. They worked for quite a while, though, and Ryan Jimmo was amazing. Just tragic how he died years ago, but he was super cool. Remember his first UFC win? He did the robot dance right after. Yeah. That was a, he was a good Canadian, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I know he had a great personality, super entertaining. Absolutely. God bless him in heaven. So, hey, you were kind enough to agree to jump into the pros pick segment. And so let's jump right into that. The pros pick brought to you by Digi South. So we've got some fights here and uh, and love to get your opinion. And even more important than uh, than uh, a pick, uh, the breakdown. But a pick would be great if you have one. First one will be uh, uh, Dominic Reyes versus uh, Volkan Oezdemir. What do you think of that light heavyweight matchup? Yeah, so this one, um, I think I'm leaning towards Volkan Ozdemir. Um, I believe he's coming off of a loss not too long ago to Anthony Smith. Um, but it was kind of a close close back and forth fight. And then, uh, you know, the, I think they both got really tired. And then uh, Anthony Smith was able to catch him with a submission. But I think, uh, you know, coming off of a loss, he's going to come back and going to be training harder and uh, be in a little better shape and i think with him being in better shape he's going to uh, do a lot better against dominic reyes but i still think always demir he's kind of got that first round finishing uh, power so i think I'm going to lean towards a first round TKO for Volkan Ozdemir. You could be right. And I think the better betting odds have it a slight favorite for Reyes because he's undefeated. But a lot of times, an undefeated fighter coming up in, in class a little bit uh, doesn't always get uh, to look as impressive as they did with fighters that were not quite as good. And we know Ozdemir is a very, very tough guy. Also, he needs a win. So I'm sure he's going to fight yeah. uh, even harder, you know. So that, that should be. An interesting fight exciting to see what happens all right next up uh, a fight we were just mentioning with another guest uh gunner nelson versus leon edwards our previous guest didn't have a lot of familiarity with leon edwards i would believe you would have a little bit more familiarity with him let's hear the breakdown between uh, gunner gunny nelson and uh the brit leon edwards yeah yeah so i've been watching uh, you know some of the kind of like the countdown stuff and stuff like that um also gunner nelson fought uh at ufc toronto um december 8th so we fought on the same card for that one and uh, that one he was fighting um cowboy Oliveira, right charles Oliveira. yeah yeah exactly and and you know he was all it was almost uh wasn't going so great from for the first uh, couple minutes but then he was able to kind of get a takedown and land some great ground and pound and stuff like that so it's definitely hard to cut and count out gunner nelson um and then we got the last name so i have to i have to go with nelson i can't uh yeah can't pick against nelson and uh, i think with with his kind of ground game his wrestling his determination um you know i think it might take two or maybe maybe even the third round for him to kind of wear on leon edwards but uh, I think we're going to see the same kind of, uh, you know, fight. I think he's going to be able to take him down, wear him out a little bit, and uh, maybe finish him with some ground and pound. Yep. Take him out to deep water and drown him sometimes, as the saying goes, right? Yeah. How much uh, of an advantage would someone have with the jet lag uh, being a factor? I think in this case, it probably wouldn't be much, even though Leon Edwards is, is from England. Gunner, I think, trained a lot with Conor McGregor and the guys over at, at, at SBG Ireland, and that's really pretty close by. So I don't think there's probably going to be a jet lag factor or uh, or, or the hometown crowd factor working against Gunnar Nelson or do you think there would be uh no and I think uh, like Gunnar Nelson's from Iceland I'm pretty sure it's yes. Iceland or Greenland but I'm Iceland. pretty sure Iceland, it's Iceland. Yep. yeah yep. and uh I don't think Iceland's that far away from the UK either right like I don't think too many time zones over or anything so and then I mean you go there for fight weeks so you go you know four or five six days early um some fighters will even go a couple weeks early if they you know, feel there's going to be an elevation change or too much of a time change. So uh, I think he's been in the sport long enough and he's smart enough that uh, if he's worried about something like a, a time change or elevation change, he would just go extra early and, uh, and adapt to it. Absolutely. I would agree. And I think Nelson wins that as well. Uh, and then finally, Darren Till against Jorge Masvidal. Interesting, interesting fight, man. I mean, you know, Masvidal, such a great KG veteran, so much experience. Till uh, been out there killing it, except for his one loss against uh, against uh, Tyron Woodley. How do you feel that fight unfolds? What are some of the more interesting aspects of that matchup that you think possibly 
the the average everyday fan might not be familiar with or something that that we should be looking at in your opinion yeah well you know i i definitely like darren till with his his striking um you know he's he's very aggressive he puts the pressure on he hits hard um you know we've seen him be super successful with that but with what uh, Tyron Woodley really showcased uh, in their title fight was uh, Darren Till's kind of, I guess you would say, lack of, of submission defense. And, uh, you know, he wasn't really able to work off of his back. And uh, Tyron Woodley got a Darst choke, yep. which is a, it's a, tricky, a tricky submission to get. You know, you, you don't see too many. It's not a high percentage uh, submission in the UFC. So I'm a little cautious of Darren Till's kind of groundwork now. Um, we hadn't seen too much of it before, but after seeing that, um, you know, if George Masvidal is able to take him down, uh, it's going to be pretty interesting to see, you know, how the ground how the ground stuff works for Darren Till. But Darren Till is definitely a big uh, uh, a big welterweight. Yeah. You know, he's almost almost a middleweight and um, you know, George Masvidal, I don't think he's a, a super big, uh, uh, super big uh, welterweight. No, so. he fought at lightweight for so many years, Masvidal. Yeah, exactly. So maybe that size, that size advantage for Darren Till will help him stuff some of the takedowns and, and maybe be a little bit longer with some of the kickboxing and stuff. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm picking Darren Till to win uh, by first round KO, but definitely I can see Masvidal uh, you know, getting inside and maybe getting the takedown and, uh, you know, being able to really control and, and land some uh, ground and pound and maybe even a submission on Darren Till. Yeah, it is possible. And I'd love to see it be a competitive fight. I'd love to see Masvidal not get smoked. You know, the question I have for you, jet lag will be a factor there. Masvidal trains here in the USA. He's flying to the UK. And then also the audience. One thing that, 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 that I think is that when you're when you're a judge at a fight and the hometown guy is getting huge support it almost seems like the judges hate to pick the other guy unless the other guy is just clearly winning so i almost feel that there's there's some validity to the fact that it's going to be very hard for george masvidal to win a five round decision in that fight in england would you agree yeah yeah i mean i don't i don't see the fight going five rounds anyways but yeah definitely with um the way the crowd reacts they react a little bit more uh when the hometown guy lands certain strikes and takedowns and stuff and uh, even if the the judges are focused in on the fight um you know they may see the same kind of punches land from both opponents but if the crowd reacts a little more to uh to the hometown guy then the you know then it may in the back of the mind of the judges they may think oh wow you know that must have been a hard shot or that was a good takedown or that submission was maybe close if uh, if the hometown town's going crazy and that may sway the the judges a little bit yeah it will influence them i really think so and it shouldn't but it does i guess because they're human and so yeah i think masvidal uh, either stops till or uh or he gets stopped himself or he loses the decision so it's kind of a situation where he better be looking to finish but i think it's going to be exciting uh for sure man i really appreciate your breakdown well i'm really excited to to see your fight may 4th and uh and one more time go ahead and shout out uh the venue and uh and your opponent yeah, so again, I'm fighting May 4th in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada at the uh, Canadian Tire Center. My opponent's going to be Matt Salis, and uh, make sure you follow my Facebook, Kyle the Monster Nelson, Instagram, the Monster 705 underscore UFC, and on Twitter at the underscore underscore monster to keep up to date with all my training and stuff. And, uh, you know, lots of highlight videos and cool stuff. Awesome. One last thing. Give an interesting fact about you, something you like to do as a hobby or your favorite sports team. Uh, well, interesting uh, interesting fact. Um, you know, before I got in the UFC and stuff like that, I worked a couple uh, odd jobs and stuff. So I used to be a school bus driver. Kind of a weird, uh, weird job I kind of fell into. I don't know how it really happened, but uh, cool. yeah, I did that for a little bit. And uh, yeah, then other than that, just, you know, coming from a small town in, uh, in Ontario, Canada, I do a lot of hunting and fishing and stuff like that. Cool. Favorite sports team? Ah, uh, favorite sports team? Uh, I'm going to have to go with the, the Toronto Maple Leafs. They're kind of the closest sports team to my hometown. I don't watch a whole lot of other sports, but uh, definitely when the Leafs are doing good, uh, 
I like to cheer them on. Absolutely. So any Toronto Maple Leafs fan, you want to support this man, you'll be supporting someone that cheers for your team. Uh, you know, anyone, hunter, fisherman, uh, drive, bus driving is a legitimate job. This is a super cool guy. Support him. We will be doing that. Looking forward to you taking home the W on May 4th, and uh, we will stay in close touch. Awesome. Thanks a lot. No problem. Thank you again, Kyle. Have a great night. That was Kyle, the Monster Nelson, Dr. Adam Rorta. Super cool guy. You can get that Canadian accent in there a little bit, A, right? A little bit, A. Yep. Yeah. No, it was, it was, he, he wasn't throwing out the A's that much, but nope. the, 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 the boots, yes, it yes. really got me. I'm like, yeah, hey, he is Canadian. Absolutely. <laughs> At Always first, I was like, it. are you sure you are? And then the you boots hear started. It, yep. A few of the words, you could hear <laughs> it. Love it. Thank you for having you uh, on uh, or coming on. Kyle, I appreciate Absolutely. it so much. Uh, you're, you're excellent for short notice, obviously, and you really uh, have a desire to excel here, and, and I appreciate having people like you on air. Uh, it, it means so much to us. If, when any of you come on, Macy, Kyle, Isaac, you all mean the world to us. We, we love anybody that wants to come on air and go ahead and discuss with us uh, their their thoughts on the fights that are going on, the ones that have happened, all the news. Real quick, call and I, and, and I, I kind of wanted to shorten that last one up a little bit. I was, I was signaling for you because I wanted to make enough time to kind of discuss this Connor thing real quick. Yes. Honestly, you know what? I, I think Connor getting in trouble here is no different than any other celebrity on the street going out and getting in trouble for uh, being being all hyped up and dealing with paparazzi or or some fan just coming to bother him at the wrong time. There needs to be an, a little bit of respect out there towards anybody that, that has a, a little more of a public status, uh, a little higher public status than, than your average person. I think there needs to be a little bit of respect. At the same time, Connor, you have... A, 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 you you have an extreme need for a lot more discipline. It's very obvious, and I, I, I think this is a situation where if you wouldn't have been throwing stuff through a bus before, it'd be a lot more forgivable. Yeah. But at this point, it's hard to forgive you for much. It's, it's just the reality. Now, I'd love to have you on air and discuss any of this stuff at any point in time. Uh, I know you may or may not tune in. I know some of your people do. Uh, in fact, I've actually talked to some of them. And and I'd love to have you on air. And and for those of you that do tune in occasionally, uh, get this word over to Connor. We'd love to have him on to discuss this and his past incidents and, and kind of see where his brain is and his thought is on everything and where your thoughts are on, on everything. Uh, it, Absolutely. I don't know how you feel about it, Colin, but I, I, I'm kind of like s stepping back and forth in, in how I honestly feel about the situation. Yeah, I, I, I do think it's on uh, Connor a little bit more, but at the same time, I, I do think the fans of, of any celebrity should show a little more respect and be able to step back a little bit. Yeah, understandable. If someone's shoving something in his face, I understand, but if it's sho shoving something in his face, taking a quick picture, you know, they're going to sell it, they're going to make a living to put food on their table, you know, in my feeling is you can't break someone's stuff just because they took a picture of you um, because you're a celebrity. I mean, back in the days when people could point at Connor and use his great line and say who the fuck is that guy <laughs> and mean connor back in those days i think he would have been really glad to have someone put a phone in his face and snap pictures and say oh i'm so glad to have this and thank you so much whatever you know so is what it is but yeah you can't smash up someone's property you know connor you're bad uh but definitely come on and talk about it we'll definitely still say you don't want to do that but uh who knows i don't know bottom line is uh we are ready to wrap this up I, uh, real quick too while yes. we're wrapping it up huge shout out to digi south make sure to go over digisouth.co if you need social media marketing also go over to combatpress.com for uh, where every fight has a story oh perfect timing it switched right when i said it combat press where every fight has a story, number one go-to source for all combat sports related news. Also go over and get your nice, awesome t-shirts from uh, Cross Train MMA Fighter at CrossTrainMMAFighter.com. Yes. And oh, I will see you boys and girls next week. I'm handing the torch over to you, Colin. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Edward, thank you so much. I know that uh, women are about to uh, contact People Magazine and vote you sexiest man of 2019. <laughs> so anyone watching, make sure to cast your vote for Dr. Adam Rorta, sexiest man in 2019 for People Magazine. I think it's going to happen. So, uh, but we could use your support. You know, I have at least a few people there voting. Uh, 
anyway, I want to thank you so much. We've got a great show next week. I'm going to announce the, the, partic- the uh, guests on uh, social media. But uh, be kind to yourself. Be gentle to yourself. Uh, look out for your loved ones, your relatives, your family, your friends, your off, your coworkers. Uh, a kind word of support really can help a lot and can save someone's life. So uh, be that guy. Be that girl. Spread the love. It'll come back to you 10 times over, and it'll make the world a better place, right? So big love, big respect to you all for Dr. Adam Rorda and the MMA Power Hour. This is Colin Crandall, and I'm tapping out.